Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast for our final segment of the day where we are still, you know, about four months away from the start of the college basketball season. But as we are seeing all of, you know, these young players head into the summer league and really the motivation for me of making this was the fact that Cooper Flagg was selected for the USA Select team and did pretty well for himself in his first scrimmage against the team. I want to look ahead and dive into the players that are going to be most exciting to see next season. So, like I just mentioned, Cooper Flag. this past year we were sort of without a consensus number one guy for college basketball and for the draft and Cooper Flag is going to be that and more. I am super in on him as a prospect. Again, the clips of you know, came out of him scrimmaging against the team and it had me really fired up to watch him. And, you know, being able to have that type of those ball skills at that size, having the two way ability that he does, he's going to be, you know, pretty much must watch TV and someone that I think is going to be massive for the sport of college basketball, where we haven't really had, I would say, you know, true star power in college basketball. Now there are names if you're into college basketball that you are absolutely familiar with. I mean, Zach Eady was the biggest player in college basketball, but obviously was very polarizing and didn't exactly play the most aesthetically appealing games. So his popularity level really wasn't where it should have been. And then, you know, you have your Caleb Loves, your RJ Davises that are, you know, veterans that have been in a lot of big moments, but at the same time, again, it just doesn't necessarily feel like it has that type of grasp on national media, but you get this, you know, six, seven, six, eight point forward in Cooper flag. That is, I mean, going to Duke university of all places. I think he's going to be, you know, borderline must watch and is going to try and help, you know, ignite the excitement for again the the casual audience in college basketball once again um there's uh the other player as well that they have um i'm totally gonna mispronounce this and i apologize from the jump here but it's like carmen malach or something malach again i know i probably got that wrong but somebody that i was recently put onto the radar for me Interesting because he is, you know, viewed as the top prospect to ever come out of Africa's NBA Academy, which I think is its whole other kind of conversation to see if we start to have these success stories. And I love that it's going from the academy into college basketball as well, because I think it's just another way. I don't know. I'm all about the international growth of the game. And I think it's really cool that we're getting, you know, a prospect that could very easily be a lottery pick next year to sort of come up in those academies. There's a couple that for the NBA, they have the one in Australia as well that a number of players graduated from, but getting to see this sort of in college is going to be really exciting for me. VJ Edgecombe from Baylor University is somebody that I'm definitely looking forward to seeing as well. We've seen a number of Baylor guards the past couple years go in the first round. It's Keontae George in 2023, Jacoby Walter last season, Davion Mitchell was a lottery pick in 2021, and Edgecombe, I'm just fascinated with the physical tools that he has. Just an extremely fun, you know, prospect from an athleticism standpoint very explosive i'm curious to see obviously there's going to have to be a consistency of shooting there that is going to have to develop i mean you can make some comparisons to probably jacoby walter from last year to some degree but i would say with even you know higher upside in terms of being an athlete and i'm a fan of jacoby walter as well so i don't mean any disrespect to him. I just think that Edgecombe is going to be a very, very fun prospect to watch next year. And, you know, Scott Drew has, we'll see how he can help him out with that. D Walter struggled a little bit to find that consistency, ended up falling to 19th in the draft, which I think is a pretty good value pick for the Raptors there, but we'll see. 
Liam McNeely, UConn lands another top 10 recruit to add to their, you know, journey here of trying to pull off the improbable and winning three straight national championships. We have seen Hurley and UConn be able to put a few players in the lottery the past couple seasons as well. Of course, Stefan Castle and Donovan Klingen last year, both going in the top seven. 2023, it was Jordan Hawkins, who had a profile that was built off of being a sharpshooter. And I feel like that's probably a little bit of a similar, similar role that McNeely is going to fall into at UConn this year as well, where they already sort of have on ball guys and, you know, lead scorers in place. But McNeely is going to be probably one of, if not the biggest X factor for UConn this upcoming season. And I would like to think as well, you know, McNeely knows what he's getting himself into after watching Stefan Castle last year, who similar to McNeely was, you know, one of the top prospects coming out of high school basketball and understanding that you're stepping into a program in UConn that has very high expectations and that winning is prioritized above all else. And McNeely doesn't strike me as a scorer that is going to be selfish. I think he's going to f- you know, fall into his role very well. And I think that, you know, as long as the three point shot is there, which I have faith in, he is probably going to be a lottery pick in 2025 as well. And then last couple names I want to highlight here, at least from the freshman class are Ace Bailey and Dylan Harper, the duo that is going to Rutgers, which, you know, I want to see Rutgers sort of pop onto the scene here. Um, They've been flirting around with, you know, building up a little bit more of a reputation with getting some top prospects in the building. And, you know, Ace Bailey in particular, who for a lot of people is seen as the number two uh, prospect only behind Cooper Flagg in next year's draft. But seeing the way that the two of them are able to put it together, Dylan Harper is someone that isn't quite as well known, but with his size and his shooting, I feel like that... He kind of, and again, I'm. we're still very limited here in terms of the actual experience that we've seen in big moments, but I don't know. I could see him being a little bit of a similar college player, at least to what Brandon Miller was at Alabama, and I'm looking to see whether or not he's able to capitalize there because these are two recruits that are definitely in the conversation for you know being top 10 NBA prospects for next year and you know as we talk this out obviously we know that we're still a year away but you know just something to consider at least and then I'll throw out a couple names here for some non-freshman players that are probably you know I think considering how weak the 2024 class was in terms of freshman talent they're we're probably not going to see too many upperclassmen sort of breaking onto the scene and competing with these younger players for the top spots in the NBA draft. But just a couple players here that I do want to highlight in terms of could they, you know, turn some heads next year. Caleb Foster was a top 25 prospect last year for Duke, but he ended up having a stress fracture in his ankle that ended his season early in just February And it was a limited sample size for Foster last year, but, I mean, he shot 40% from three on two and a half attempts per game. Again, something that probably going to have to see him have a bigger sample size in order to sort of, you know, again, break out the same way with all of this new freshman talent that's coming in. But a name to keep in mind with as well, because especially if he can, you know, take advantage of the opportunities alongside these two other star freshmen that are coming in you can feel really good about the Duke core that they have in play kind of a personal favorite here is Baba Miller of Florida State I mean you look at a player who has the physical tools of someone who would be exactly what NBA franchises want I mean crazy length with him with a three-point shot I was definitely disappointed. He was somebody that I was really high on coming into last season, and I saw the flashes, but the consistency wasn't necessarily there. But again, if you see him on a basketball court, he's definitely what NBA scouts want in a player with the ability to play defense, have size, and 
you know, extend his range out as well. Somebody to keep in mind with as well. And then last name here I'm going to throw out there is Aaron Bradshaw was a top five high school recruit going into Kentucky last year. He was dealing with injuries during training camp and during the first month of the season. And he just never really got con you know, consistent playing time and Kentucky was, you know, a collection of a lot of young players for the most part. And it was clear, obviously, with Calipari too, knew that there was something weird going on between him and Kentucky and the way that, you know, he's been one of the best recruiters of the past decade or so, but he was trying to lean a little bit more into the experienced players on the roster. I wouldn't say to protect his job necessarily because, it, you know, he was on a guaranteed contract that a buyout was necessary in order for, you know... The I would say that, you know, Kentucky, they were never going to just straight up fire him. I think that if Arkansas didn't come in with their job offer for Cal, that he would still be back at Kentucky, considering the amount of money it would have cost the program to let go of him. But, you know, all that to be said, Bradshaw kind of got buried last year, but I think that he's somebody, and his percentages wouldn't back it up. More of an eye test thing for me, but somebody that I do think is going to be able to, you know, shoot the shoot the three from a seven footer. Somebody that, you know, again, I, I think his percentages were somewhere along twenty five percent, so not very promising by any means. But, you know, transferred to Ohio State this off season, and you know, Ohio State trying to build up something new. Bradshaw could be a little bit of a focal point for that offense, for that organization, and if he can just find the consistency I think if he finds the three-point shot that automatically is going to put him in some conversations but you know just being able to stay on the court be just reliable in the post I think he has the frame the physical tools everything that I'm not worried about him defensively what's going to put him over the edge is the ability to you know space out the floor as well but you know, so many names that I sort of excluded from this list as well. We only had 12 minutes to talk about it. Again, this freshman class is deep. So really looking forward to, I think this is going to be, you know, one of the more notable college basketball seasons that we've had in some times in terms of the national attention. I think there's going to be a little bit of, you know, people are starved from it because again, as much as college basketball, it was a great year last year, but it was kind of a clear runaway favorite in UConn, and there really weren't all that many top draft prospects that were popping off the screen for a lot of players, and I think that that's what we're going to get this year. But let me know who you're most excited to see next year in college basketball. That is all the time we have for the show today. Remember to like, follow, subscribe wherever you keep up with us. Check us out on social media as well for more exclusive short content. And we will be back tomorrow afternoon, same time as always, 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern. We will see you then. Take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great.